Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us. We're broadcasting from the Thomas K. McKeon Center for Creativity, and I'm your host, Corey D. Taylor. My guest today is Victoria McCullough, and she's also joined by her father, Victor McCullough. Victoria is a boxer who is on the rise. If you want to know what it's like to be in the mind of a child prodigy, you come to the right place, so stay tuned because this is Up Close with Corey Taylor. Thank you for joining us. We are here with boxer Victoria McCullough and her father, who is a mixed martial artist, Victor McCullough. Hey, Victoria, how you doing? Good. What's going on, Vic? I'm going to shake your hand on, anyway. Y'all you know. doing good? Oh, so super excited. Hey, I know a lot of things have been going on, but every time I bring people on the show, the first thing I ask them is, what have they been up to? So for you first, what have you been doing? Um, I just been... So... Yesterday, I had a boxing match, but I won unopposed because there is no one in my weight class. Um, there's this one girl, but she came in at 150, and she didn't want to fight me anyway. Oh, wow. So you just had a fight right prior to you flying in, to, coming into Tulsa, and you went unopposed. Now, when you say unopposed, for those of us who are like, illiterate when it comes to fighting what does that mean did you have to fight somebody or just nobody wanted to fight you period no one wants to fight me period oh, okay and how old are you 13 that's crazy oh my gosh she sounds so gross he's like no one wants to fight me so <laughs> victor what you been up to man uh nothing man just chilling and uh managing my daughter about it. Wow. Now, this is what people need to know. You all are very humble, but it did not always start off as humble beginnings because, <laughs> Victor, I know you and I've been knowing you all for quite some time. Um, Victor, you wasn't a very humble guy when you were young. I remember you used to talk and like, I'm going to be the best. I'm going to be this, this, this. And, we, you know, we have pictures of you and we're going to talk about talk to you in depth on another show. But I mean, golden gloves, all kind of stuff. And I remember the craziest thing about you. We were like, why are you taking so many different forms of martial art? And you was like, I just want to be the best. And I was like, what? Like ninjutsu, jujitsu, boxing, Thai, uh, what is it? Taekwondo. Kickboxing, yes. Muay Thai, all these, too many of them. Like, like they need to give you your own TV show because you have done every mixed martial artist discipline that's known to man. And I remember I tried to help you one time just so the people would know. Years ago, <laughs> I was trying to help him and I was sparring and he hit me real hard and I was done. I didn't help him anymore. So, with that being said, you are the manager of your daughter, but how did you get her into boxing? Well, my daughter was really strong. Um, as you know, I have six kids, and with that, I would have to, my wife would have to take three, and I would have to take three to the gym. And so we had this little, what we called a little prison cage that we would have her in as I would be sparring. And so one of the coaches uh, would have her pushing a ball and then hitting on the back. And so we, you know, one day she needed, uh, one of the young, other young, young girls needed a sparring partner. And so we put Victoria in and that was just from there. It was just, we just soared from there. Man, and so that, wait a minute, wait, wait. So you put her in and she's sparring with someone else. Did, was it like, they were like, oh man, like we might need to take it further or did she knock somebody? I mean, how did that, I mean, cause just because she sparred one time, what made you all believe that she had this spark to be a boxer? Because especially her being a young lady, and we're gonna get to you in a minute to talk about how that feels, but what made you all say, oh, we need to take this to another level? She was just always aggressive. Um, from the moment that she was born all the way up until now, she just had this spark. You know, every father, I believe, can look at their child and, and see something in their child that says, hey, this is what they're, what, what they're gonna be good at. Um, I saw a piece of me in her that I knew that was gonna go to the next level. And each time we would have a chance to show her athletic ability um, in an aggressive sport, boxing, wrestling, uh, jujitsu, she would always soar no matter if it was her going against another female athlete or a male athlete. So um, when we were, Clarissa Shields, which is a two-time Olympic gold medalist, uh, her sparring partner needed to warm up. 
and Victoria uh, at, at age 11 knocked her out. Whoa, whoa, stop, 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 wait. Now, Clarishill is a grown woman. Mm-hmm. And her sparring partner is about how old? About the same. About, about, she was about 21. 21. And you were fighting a 21 year old at 11 and you knocked her out? Okay, now, with that being said, now, (laughs) you are a young lady, obviously beautiful. How does it feel to be like a female boxer and. Is it hard because you have this feminine side of you, but then you got to get in there and you got to get it rough house and just start fighting? What does what is that like for you? Um, it feels uh, nervous at the time because boys they don't like to get beat by girls, and then when they start to get rough, you have to like push it off with everything you got. Yeah, and so you being a young lady, what is it like when you fight girls? Is it is it different for fighting girls than it's fighting boxing girls versus guys? Yes, because uh, sometimes there's the same strength, the same experience, but with most girls, they don't think. Oh, they don't think. So talk about that a little bit. When you talk about things, so for you in boxing, you it's a thinking thing for you. It's not just a punching. Because a lot of times when people hear about boxing, they think that people are out there brawling. They're just fighting. They think it has no skills. Because, you know, most people say, well, MMA or boxing is all brutal. But me being around the sport, of course, working with you over the years, I know that it takes a lot of science. It takes a lot of um, um courage and a lot so when you're out there boxing what is like your strategy because you said it's about thinking and others and females typically don't think what is your strategy uh my strategy is to pick the shots to pick to know what where they're going and then when they move to where you want them to go then you just Go with the flow. Just go with the flow? Okay, all right. That's cool. I like that. So you just had a fight, and I'm still trying to get this wrapped around my mind. 11 years old, and you knocked a grown woman out. Okay, that's not good. But (laughs) that's amazing, actually. But the reality is, is that you're 13, all right, and you just finished. So the fight you finished yesterday was, what was was that one? That was State. That was state. Colorado and, state, and now that's Colorado State, and then now you're on your way to regionals. And right. where would that be? That will also be in Colorado. Also, uh, she just came back from the qualifiers. So right now, USA Boxing uh, is not allowing females um, in certain a- uh, in certain aspects of like nationals, regionals, with the, which they're trying to fix right now, so that she could have a greater chance at getting greater, bigger competition for the big thing which we're going for, which is the Olympics. Um, So she just came back from New Mexico about four weeks ago for the Junior Olympic qualifiers, Um, and then state, and then regionals. So she has to win state, which she's already done. She's went on the post. She'll go to regionals from there. Uh, once she wins regionals, then she'll go to the nationals and then the junior Olympics. So let me ask you this question, Victoria. Is it weird that your dad manages you? Do you think it's weird? Is no. he strict? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, that was a trick question. I know he's strict because I got a chance to come to where you all live and train. And I remember you saying you have six kids. And I remember he had you all literally running around the block. And, like, you all were just really in this – Gym stuff in the house and punching bags and then y'all do double duty. Y'all go to jujitsu. Y'all go to boxing. The whole family, even the wife, everybody. Right. So, how did you get the family involved in like a family affair? Like we know what her story is, but how you get your wife involved and all of the other kids involved in jujitsu and stuff? Because it seemed like kids are so different that they like pretty much like oh, I won't do all that, you know. But how you get all of them involved? Well, I'm an army officer. And so we lead by example. And uh, my wife is a mental health therapist at the prison. And so she understands that self-defense is the number one key um, in, in, in our life. You know, we, we hang around, or I should say that, you know, eight hours a day, we hang around the most brutal inmates um, it, that Colorado has to offer. And so we understand that fitness as well as self-defense is the number one important key factor. Uh, You know, we can't, 
you know, my wife doesn't have the liberty of having two or three guards uh, standing outside the door. She's one on one with these inmates trying to get them uh, mental help. So if one of them were to jump up, she needs to know how to defend herself. And so for me, um, throughout my life, you know, martial arts has always been my safeguard, you know, my, my safety net. And so teaching this, passing this on, not only was it beneficial for me to help me learn leadership, but to also spend time with my kids and give them something like a piece of me. Wow. So let me ask you this question, Victoria, because we hear you, you hear your dad talking and he's strict. But do you ever get pushback from other children when they see you all training so hard? Do they all just does anyone ever say, well, girl, don't you just want to have fun? And don't you have you ever had that happen before? Yes. How do you deal with that? <laughs> um, I just say that I don't have time and that I have to be successful and that I want to make it in life. And I don't want to be on the streets or try to do drugs or alcohol. Wow, good. Well, sh well. now, where did you learn all that from? Like, that, you, you're so articulate, like, be on the streets or do alcohol. Like, did, is that something that your parents instilled in you? What, so mm -hmm. tell me a little bit about that. What is, what is the culture like at home for you all? As all of you are, because I want the people to, I want to be fair, because we're bringing you here because you're on your way to do an Olympic run, but your other siblings are equally excess, successful in other sports, um, jujitsu, <laughs> even mom. And so what is the culture like at home when it comes to everybody being galvanized? We heard from dad, but what is it like for you when you're there and everybody's working and doing jujitsu and all of the stuff you do? What's the culture like? The culture is like we collaborate with each other, we help each other out, and that one of us can teach one of us different things. Wow. Man, I'm just shocked right now because she's grown up so much. I think it was a couple of years ago that we were there and got a chance to see them do training and stuff like that and came over to the jujitsu deal. And I, 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 for one, I'm shocked, okay, because you have six children. And for all of them to be very disciplined and for all of them to be excelling in sports and all of that stuff. I mean, like, where does all of that come from? How, how did you how did you manage to do that? Because I have four children of my own and my oldest daughter, shout out to her. She just graduated. Um, and then my son is a football athlete in college and my second oldest daughter is an athlete. And then I have one in high school, but who's also an athlete. But people always ask me, what's the key to success? So how would you attribute what, what would you attribute to your success of helping them to grow and become like, I mean, here she is. She's 13 years old and sitting here talking and carrying herself like a grown lady. You know, what what where does that come from? Well, for us, it's mentorship uh, every day, you know you know, amongst, you know, having a strong spiritual background, we, we do a lot of prayer. We do a lot of um, mentorship with each child. We try to give each child the time that they need to develop. Um, you know, ha me having a strong background, I've had great mentors like yourself, uh, Earl Gilkey, um, you know, strong men that just kind of helped me along the way. And so, having to, you know, having the small success that I've had in my life, giving it now, trying to give that to my kids so they don't have to make the same mistakes that I make. So a lot of it is just mental, you know, letting them know in our house, every there's a picture of a, of a champion or a champion fight in every room of the house, even the bathroom. So keeping wow. them in that championship mentality to understand that it's all about you. It's all about the way you feel the way you know that when you come into whatever arena that it is, that you control the outcome. And so that, you know, even with Victoria, we do a lot of mental prep, you know, on the drive here, we do a lot of mental prep. How do you feel? How do you, what do you think that your opponent is gonna do? And, you know, because she's physically strong, we know that we've taken care of the physical aspect, but the mental aspect has to be there. So in order to achieve success, starts with the mind itself. Yeah, now let me ask you this question because, and this is gonna be a hard one, okay? You're just ready. Are you boy crazy? Huh? I <laughs> <laughs> broke right, huh? Like, what? I, <laughs> I knew that was gonna be a good one. Okay, so you're obviously a growing young lady. 
um, you're 13, you could beat up probably most of the boys that like you. And I remember when we were little kids, they used to say if a, if a girl tap you or, or whatever, they hit you, they like you. So my question is to you, <laughs> you, know, huh? <laughs> you didn't know I was going to do this, but, you know, not not anything crazy, but you, you like boys. And how is that for you being that, you know, do they know that you could probably beat half of them up? Like, yes. So she said, yes. So how is that for you with the whole boy thing, you know, and trying to be so focused? Um, it's kind of hard, but easy. But most of the guys, they don't want to date me because of they don't want a girl, a girlfriend that is stronger than them. And when I showed that, it's just. They flow away. You know? they, they flow away. All right, now, well, we're not doing dating right now. I know that's right, but that's I don't, I'm don't. i going to say that for Dad. But, you know, I know that has to be hard because, you know, a lot of times when we see um, female boxers, you know, um, they may have different lifestyles and things of that nature. And here it is, you you know, you, you like boys and all of this stuff. And I know that has to be kind of hard, you know what I mean? um to to cope with you know because here it is you're out here training you're boxing and things of this nature and you could beat up most of the boys you probably that like you you know but the thing is is that how do you think that this is going to factor in as you get older like is this just something you enjoy doing or with boxing or i mean what's what's the psyche what's your mentality behind this you really like the box yes i got inspired by clarissa shields i took a picture with her um she, when I had troubles, troubles with my jab, she would always tell me to come to the mat, and then she shows me how to step, move, because I have like heavy feet. I don't like to move that much. <laughs> you don't like to move that much, no. so you just like a statue, and you just yeah. sit there. And, okay, go ahead. And then now I have to I have extra help uh, to move with my footwork. And wow. Now, I've got a chance to see some of your video clippings and things of that nature where, like, literally you're going in and you're, like, demolishing your opponents and everything. So when you're in that ring and you're fighting another young lady, do you look across that ring and you look at her as this, if she's a girl, and say, oh, my God, this is a girl. I don't want to hurt her because I'm probably physically more stronger than her. Or do you just look at her as a boxer and, like, she, she this is what she want to do, this is what I want to do, and we're about to get at it? Yes. The second one. <laughs> the second one? She said, yes, the second one. So you go in. Do you ever have fear when you go in? I mean, like, or are you are you confident? What is it like when you go into the ring and get ready to box? What's that like for you? Um, when I get into the ring, I get nervous because I might mess up on some things. And we all have mistakes, and we learn from it. And then when the bell rings, I just... Let that all go and then do what God told me to be. He calls me to be. Wow. So that's, I, I'm just really excited about what's going on. So in your quest, how far, I mean, even the Olympics and things of that nature, how far would you like to go? Because it's obvious with your track record so far. Um, you've been doing this since, how long has you have you actually been boxing? Since I was eight. Since you were eight. And you're knocking somebody out at 11 that's a grown woman. That's, that's like I said, that's amazing. But how far do you want to take this? I mean, is the Olympics the end all be all or do you want to go beyond the Olympics? What is, what is your goal? Um, beyond. Um, when I get older, I'm thinking about going pro. Pro. Um, because people are now complaining because they can't see the boxer's face or they just... They don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. So I just want to go beyond to UFC. Um, oh, you, whoa, 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 wait, you want to be a mixed martial artist? You want to follow a dance? <laughs> okay, this is crucial right here. I didn't even know that. So you want to, look, are you, what is it? Like, you just really like to get in there and mix it up? Like, you like you just, so boxing is just the beginning. So you actually want to go into the UFC and, and fight, like, like, what's her name? Ronda Rousey. You want to do some stuff like that? Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Now, Dad, how are you handling this? I mean, because she obviously is aggressive and has a spark and want to do it. Like, how are you handling this whole thing with now her starting to get, like, this popularity and all of this stuff? Well, the popularity is easy because 
you know, our house is shielded. You know, when we come home, she's just Victoria. Um, like I tell her, you know, um, we have a strict schedule on training. We give her her time to where she can be on the phone. We give her a time when she can, you know, go out and play with friends so that she, so we balance the two of being a fighter and being, you know, just a regular, you know, teenager. Um, with this, like I said, she's an amazing, awesome, you know, young lady. You know, I, I, I liken it to what Custom Model said about Mike Tyson. He said, you know, what keeps me alive is knowing that you are going to make it. And when I see her, I see the better part of myself, knowing that she's so strong. She gets it, you know, in ways that when it took me years to develop, you know, a mentality, she just gets it. And so I don't really... You know, I don't I don't really worry about her because she's she just got it. She has that spark. She has that niche. So for you, Victoria, how did mom feel about this? Because here is, you know, it's how many girls is it? Four. It's four girls. And like you're getting ready to do something that can literally mess your face up. Like how did mom and I know mom, mom, how did mom feel about Oh my God, my baby might come in with a big old whole lip or jaw ball. Like, how did your mom feel about this? When I first started, she was nervous and that she didn't want me to do it at all. And then after my first fight, she was a little bit confident. She grew into it. And then she sat down with me, talked to me, and asked me, do you actually want to do this? Or is this what or you just want your dad to be proud mm -hmm. I said both because I don't want to be just working at McDonald's or working at a fast food restaurant I actually mm -hmm. want to make something of myself wow that's awesome hmm. I like that 13 years old and doing good stuff okay so now Victor you have a career oh and let me say thank you for your service i know you've been in the military for quite some time and everything but you have had aspirations and again we're going to get into that in another show but really um how do you feel because i know with you having six kids and all of them being ultra successful in sports and things of that nature and especially with victoria rising to popularity like how do you deal with the pushback because i know parents try to tell you what to do and this is not the right way to raise your kids and you're not going to let them grow up how do you deal with that i just look at the like you know like victoria said you know there's something on the inside of us that you know which we know that it's our spirituality that tells me you know that governs my direction uh, for my daughter i know that when I first saw her, that she was just amazing. There's certain people that you know that has that it factor. Um, with her, like I said, it was just that that push. Like, you know, you look at other kids, you examine what the arena looks like, you know, the competitors. And as you can see, she's just she just has it. You know, um, we train re really hard. You know, we know that, you know, that anything worth having is worth you know, fighting for. It's worth the struggle. And so with her, I'm in that struggle with her every day, you know, mentorship, tr training. I mean, people don't understand, you know, how much training that we actually do. Um, so we have a private workout, what we call our McCullough workout. And then she has um, three hours of private, uh, a private session with another coach by herself and then she has a team corporation training that she does with the rest of her team so she basically goes to work about 40 hours a week wow now i got a question for you victoria now i was talking to your dad a few minutes ago and i asked him this question how are you dealing with the popularity of you being so successful in sports and i also understand that you have to fly different places and you're just with the coaches and you're not with mom and dad how do you handle the popularity that's happening um how i handle it um when just be humble stay smile whenever someone wants to get an autograph I don't, I don't know how to write in curfus, though. But, 
But I sign it, take a picture with them, just stay humble. And so, did, did do you ever have? Did, let me ask that this because the kids don't like to say this. Did she ever have a big head moment though, like where it was just like, oh shoot, I'm the stuff dad. Like, did she ever have that moment? No, because <laughs> Victoria, I mean, it's it's for each fight. You know, people don't understand. She walks around about 150, cuts to 138. Um, in that in that three week period that we're fighting for each fight. Um, there's a lot of you. You guys don't see the the crying and the the pushback that I get from her. Like she's like, man, I really don't want to cut weight today or whatever. So when she finally gets to that moment, she's ready. You know, she goes through every like a you know the whole circle of emotions. She's she's just in my eyes, like I said, she's just kind of like perfect. Um, she doesn't she doesn't really talk a lot. Um, you know, where, as you know, back in the day, I would you, talk you a lot. Yeah, I, you I was, was like a young Muhammad Ali. You'd be like, yeah, come on with it. Oh, yeah, it's go, they're going down, you know, go the chosen one. That's what you she, say. Yeah, so she doesn't, she doesn't really have that. that that's why I said she has, she's just that other side of me, you know, that, that God has just blessed me with. Like, she doesn't, she doesn't, she's not big headed. She doesn't, like, she's really like, I just want to be the best. And she, she, she's hoping that, you know, what she believes in, what I believe in, uh, comes together. So it's, it's really awesome to watch the whole process of her, you know, from the moment that we start the training to the end of the fight. Wow. So, Victoria, this show, Up Close with Corey Taylor, is all about what it takes for a person to go on and be successful. In a couple of words, what do you think it takes for a person to be successful? It starts with the right mindset. Um, if you have a, a mental dump, then you will never make it. You have to wake up, say, I'm going to be the best. Not wake up crying, sad. You have to wake up, put a smile on your face. That's how I start my day. Wow. Well, Victoria, thank you for coming. Victor, thank you for joining us. All right. I hope you've enjoyed our show today. I would like to thank our guests, Victoria McCullough and Victor McCullough, for joining us. Think about this. Change is inevitable. But your attitude towards that change, it is always optional. Until next time, keep looking forward.